<clears throat> Welcome back to my series on chess opening theory. In this video, I'm going to be looking at the A3 sideline in the Vinover variation of the French defense. So the French defense is when we have the moves E4, E6, D4, D5. And the Vinover begins after the moves Knight to C3, Bishop to B4. And as you can see, there are lots and lots of potential sidelines here. Lots of stuff. I probably will not be able to cover all of it, but I will try to at least cover the popular stuff and the really dangerous stuff. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at a sideline that's pretty dangerous. And that occurs after the move Pawn to A3. This is known as the uh, Winkelmann Reimer Gambit, and it's a gambit, but not really. Like, basically, what black now does is, of course, take the knight, and now the pawn on e4 is undefended, so black can take that. But it's not a true gambit, because white is going to regain the pawn after playing queen to g4. Now, one thing white could also do... Whoopsies. <laughs> That one thing white could also do is play pawn to f3, but this is not scary. This is not something to be afraid of. Black can just play c5, put some pressure on the center. White cannot actually take this pawn. If white does take the pawn, then black has to move queen to h4 check, and black will just, at the very least, regain the pawn and probably also mess up white's castling rights, since g3 is no good due to the pawn just falling and then taking the rook on h1 and so basically f3 is not to be afraid of queen to g4 is the main move that black should be scared of so in this position there is no nice way for black to save both of these pawns so knight to f6 is a good move to make just to protect this pawn since it's a central pawn it's kind of more valuable more important it's taking like it's controlling more important squares like, black very often sacrifices the g-pawn in the vinegar. Black can now play rook to g8, you know, getting the rook into the game, activating it. Queen to h6. And then there are lots and lots of choices here, lots of alternatives that black can now play. But I like the move that Anish Giri recommends in his course on the French, which is just to play pawn to c5, striking at the center. There are not a whole lot of games that feature this line and the ideas associated with it, but I did manage to find one. It's a pretty good one. So white should now generally play knight to e2, because this pawn over here is under attack. Black wants to take it. White probably should not take on c5, because then these three pawns will be very weak. This file will be opened. Black will be able to put some nice pressure on white. So... White generally defends the pawn. Black can now take. And if white takes with knight takes d4, then these pawns will be very weak. And black can just play a6 to control the b5 square. You know, stop a bishop or a knight from going to it. And then black can then play pawn to e5, bishop to e6, knight bd7, queen to c7, and then just castle queenside, and then just have a very pleasant position like stuff like that so that's why after c takes d4 instead of taking with the knight white will generally take back with the pawn and then i can just play knight c6 attacking this pawn once more and then the more common move that's played by white is bishop to b2 but i think i will you know talk briefly about what anish giri says about um uh, pawn to c3, like, he believes it to be a more challenging move, even though it's much rarer, there aren't that many games that feature it. After pawn to c3, he recommends playing pawn to e5, and then after d takes e5, knight takes e5, knight to f4, and here, if black is not happy with the draw, black can play queen to d6 or pawn to a6, like, Geary doesn't mention this, since he's generally happy to get a draw with black, but... If you're facing a low rate, lower rated opponent, you probably will not be happy. So basically, you can play either queen d6 or a6. But if you're happy with the draw, then you can go for queen to a5, 
which is objectively a stronger move, but it does allow a potential repetition. Like, bishop to d2 is not particularly scary, because there's just knight e g4 defending this knight. Should be mentioned very briefly that white should not take this knight, because then the queen will take this pawn and fork the king and rook. So anyway, after bishop d2, knight e g4, queen should move somewhere, say queen to h4, and we could have queen to e5, and then just push this pawn, you know, stuff like that. And then if instead of bishop to d2, white plays a more challenging move, there is a repetition after a queen takes c3 check, bishop d2, queen to d4, you know, protecting this knight indirectly through the power of discovered check, or sorry, discovered attack via check. Like if queen takes knight, then knight goes to d3 or f3 with check, and then just queen takes the queen. So then bishop to e3, the queen only has one good square to go to, and this would be a repetition. So that is why in this position, I thought I should just mention that a6 and queen d6 are alternatives that you can play if you're not happy with a repetition. But this is not what happened in the game. Back in this position, white did not play the more challenging pawn to c3, which has not appeared in many games. Instead, white played the move bishop to b2. And now black played bishop to d7. And an important thing to mention is that um, black's actually okay to keep their king in the center for the time being. And if desired, black can, you know, put the rook on g6 to kick the queen away and then play king f8 and king g8. 8 to kind of castle by hand, if desired. And otherwise, black can also just play rook to c8 and then put the knight on a5 and then on c4, just have a very strong knight over there. And overall, black is doing just fine. This line is not scary if you're not, if you know what you're doing. So before continuing, I thought that I should introduce the players. Unfortunately, I could not find that much information about them or the event that uh, this game took place in. But um, with the white pieces, we have international master uh, Nicholas Luba. He is an IM from Germany, and he does not have a Wikipedia page, at least not in English. I believe he does have a Wikipedia page in German. And uh, he is married to the WGM Melanie Lube, also from Germany. And uh, that's about everything that I could find about him, unfortunately. At least I did find a picture, so there's that. And with the black pieces, we have Grandmaster Jiri Stocek. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. He is a Grandmaster from the Czech Republic. He won the Czech Chess Championship in 2011. And as of 2018, he is the fourth highest rated player in the Czech Republic. And uh, that, that's about all the information I could find. And this, ter this game took place at a tournament in Germany, which I could not find much information about online. Like, this game is originally from uh, Chessbase, from, I think it was, was it the Mega Database or the Big Database? I forget which one. Um, but it's a very good game. It's a good game that illustrates how Black can play against this scary-looking Gambit, which is not really a Gambit because White did not really give up a pawn. Anyway, hey, more information, or at least the information I could find, is in the video description. Now back to the game. So in this position, White decided to play for some central control with the move pawn to c4. A fairly principled move. Engine doesn't like this, but hey, we're kind of outside of opening theory territory at the moment. There are not many games here, like if you've managed to follow all the moves so far, you're doing very well. So black now play knight to a5, knight probably wants to come to c4, or maybe to b3. White played knight to c3, improving the position of their knight, getting the knight out of the way of the bishop, so that white can maybe castle kingside, but probably not. And then here, black played knight to b3. Which is an okay move. You can play like this if you want. This is not bad. The engine considers it to be a bit inaccurate. 
Like another way to play is rook g6, and then after queen f4, play rook c8, and then just maybe take this pawn, you know, stuff like that. But what black did in the game is fine, like knight b3 is okay. So we have rook to d1, to g6 now, queen to e3, queen to a5, five, like black's just activating their pieces. Black's king is fairly safe in the center for the time being. We have bishop to e2, rook takes g2, king to f1, knight to g4. Black is getting very, very aggressive. Like, not even moving the rook away. This looks a little precarious. This, you know, where can the rook go? Well, it can probably go to f2. That's probably where it's going. We have queen takes e4. Pawn e4 is hanging because the knight moved away. Rook takes f2 check, king to e1, and already we're kind of seeing that it's actually white who is probably the one who should be afraid here, because black's king is fairly safe, whereas white's king is, mm, <laughs> you know, like this. Anyway, black now goes for queen to h5, we have rook to g1, pawn to f5, black is getting very aggressive, if attacking the queen, but also defending their knight, which was pinned to their own queen by the bishop. And now, in this position, white made what is kind of the losing move, which is queen takes b7. If you want, you can pause the video and try to figure out why is this move bad. What's wrong with it? What did black do now? So I will reveal the answer in three, two, one. So the reason why this this move is bad is because White's king is in a lot of danger. White's king is at a very high risk of getting checkmated, and White's pieces, especially these guys over here, are not doing a good job of helping, uh, you know, defend against the checkmate. In fact, it turns out that White does not really have time to take this rook. Black now plays queen takes h2, and basically, if white takes this rook, the problem is, like, for example, like, black can put their king maybe on f7, like, maybe just somewhere where it won't get checked by anything, like, I think either square is fine, then white has to deal with this problem, white has to deal with queen takes, you know, the rook on g1, and with checkmates. Ace. Like, there isn't a nice way of stopping mates here. The queen can't really go to a nice square. There just isn't really much time for anything to happen. Like, I suppose there is... Well, there isn't even queen to h1, because if, for example, queen to h1, there's rook takes here check, knight takes, and then queen f2 with mate, for example. Well, so, basically... White does not have time to take the rook on a8. White has to kill this knight on b3 instead. So, oh, that is why, you know, queen takes b7 is no good. It's because black's mating attack is just way too strong. So after queen takes h2, white decides to take the knight on g4. Like, that is, you know, very sensible. When your opponent is attacking you, it can make sense to just try to get rid of their pieces so that they run out of pieces to attack you with. That just takes back, kind of renewing this threat over here. White plays queen takes b3 because the knight was covering this square. The king now has somewhere to escape to. We have rook to b8, activating this rook, getting him into the game. Or her, it could be female rook, I don't know, I didn't ask it. We have queen to c2. The engine doesn't like this. The engine instead wants queen takes b8 check, and queen takes b8, king takes f2, queen takes b2. And then in this position, this is kind of a losing endgame for white, because even though it's queen versus rook and knight, black does have these two strong friends on the king side to help win the game, and also... White's king is very exposed, and white's pieces are not well coordinated. So black will not have much difficulty winning this endgame. The engine gives a line like knight e4, king e7, d5, ed5, rook d5, bishop c6, king c3. And then it basically says white should give off this rook. That's pretty funny. But engines, they play like aliens. It's hard to understand their play sometimes. 
Anyway, we have Queen C2, a much more human move, not going for that losing endgame. We have Pawn to G3. Black realizes that they have another piece that can join this attack. This pawn can promote, crazy enough. So, White now plays Bishop to C1. The engine just, uh, sorry, instead of Bishop C1, the engine wants King D2, but this makes very little difference. Like, we would just have G2, King C1, and then just promote to Queen. White has to give up their rook for a pawn, essentially, and black just has too much material here. Here, this is just very devastating. Like, basically, it's two rooks versus a bishop and a knight. That's quite a material advantage. And not only that, but black has the initiative. White is on the defensive. Things just do not look good for white here. But that's not what happened in the game. Instead, we have bishop to c1. Much more human move, trying to keep things together. On to g2 anyway. Like, black is not afraid of white taking this rook. In fact, if you want, uh, you can uh, pause the video now and try to figure out uh, black to move, checkmate white. How would black checkmate white here? Here, like, it's not mate and one. It's not mate and one. Just, I will reveal the move in three, two, one. Or moves, I should say, in 3, 2, 1. So just check like this. And then there are actually multiple ways that work. But this is one of the fastest ways. To just do all this. I basically... Oops. Nope, that's the wrong one. I am silly. It's queen f5, so that the king can't go here. I am so silly. Queen, this queen does a good job of covering that. Anyway. That is one way of delivering mate. Eight. Back to the game, though. After bishop c1, we have pawn to g2. White did not take the rook. White just ran with their king. We have rook to f1, trying to promote this pawn. Like, if bishop takes rook, then just promote this pawn. The queen is worth more than this rook. So we have queen to d3, sorry, king to d3. Rook takes d1 check. Queen takes d1. Promote to queen. White is now basically down a queen. <laughs> well, wow, let's see. No, no, no. White is... Yeah, white is basically down a queen. Like, we have rook versus bishop and knight. We have bishop versus bishop, queen versus queen, and then this queen versus nothing. Like, even the pawn count is the same, so it's basically down a queen. So, we have bishop h5 check. Black's like, eh, my king's going to escape your checks. I'm not scared. Queen to f3. Well, it's trying to do something. It's trying to activate their queen somehow. The problem is, is that there were no squares the queen could go to that would avoid a queen trade. Queen g g3 just pins the queen to the king. This queen is going nowhere. It's just getting traded. We have bishop g5 check. King to c8. And it was in this position that white now resigned because there is nothing left to try. Nothing left that white can do. Black just trades queens, and then black is just going to be up a plain queen. And yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this game. Hopefully this gambit or this sideline isn't too scary for you. And uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Bye for now.